So the problem that we're going to start off with, you're going to write um, number one. This is problem number one on the worksheet that you're going to get. And the function we're dealing with is y equals x to the third minus. You're just doing this on one of the three sheets I gave you. Yep. Uh, x to the third minus 3x squared minus 4x divided by 4x squared plus 12x plus 8. All right, so what would you guys like to do first? Y intercept. Okay, and can anyone tell me what it is? It should be zero. Yeah, zero, zero. So if we look, we would need to put a plus zero on the end, and so our y intercept is just zero, zero. Okay. What do you guys want to do next? So if we look at the front. What do we see? It's going to be an oblique. So for horizontal, I'm going to put none. And then I'm going to set up my long division. So x to the third minus 3x squared minus 4x is being divided by 4x squared plus 12x minus 8. Yep, so 4x times 1 fourth x is what would get you what you want. So we'll say 1 fourth x multiplied by 4x squared is x to the third. 1 fourth x times 12x is plus 3x squared. And then 1 fourth x times negative 8. Oh, that's a plus. Sorry, I wrote over it in marker and I missed it. That's a plus. So 1 fourth x times positive 8 is 2x. Okay. And we draw the line and change the signs. So this gives me, well, 0 first, which is what we wanted. And then it gives me a negative 6x squared and then a negative 6x. So this is one of those kind of tricky ones because we have a 4x squared and we want it to become a negative 6x squared. So the numbers are kind of weird. So do you remember how we make our fraction to make one number go away and another number come into place? So we want to get rid of the 4, so we put the 4 on the bottom. And what do we want instead? Negative 6, so we're going to put negative 6. Okay. You need, I don't know where I left the stuff. Back there. So grab, yes, perfect. Okay. So negative 6 fourths, can we simplify that? Negative 3 over 2. So our slant asymptote or our oblique asymptote y equals 1 fourth x minus 3 halves. So on my paper, I'm going to start with a y-intercept of negative 3 halves. What decimal is that? So I'm going to start at negative 1.5, and then from negative 1.5, what am I going to do? Slope of up 1, right 4. 
So I'm going to go up one and then write one, two, three, four. Up one, write one, two, three, four. And I'll do the same in the opposite direction. All right, how are we doing? Are we ready for the next part? What do we need to do after this? Factor, okay. So if we look at the top, how do we factor that? So I'm going to take out a GCF of x, and I have x squared minus 3x minus 4. Mm -hmm. So x, x minus 4, x plus 1. What do we do with the bottom? Take out 4, that leaves us with x squared plus 3x plus 2, 4, and then x plus 2. Um, that, it looks like a negative 8 because I drew over it in marker, but it was a plus 8. And so to multiply to 2 but add to 3 would be 2 and 1. I did, and then I fixed it. I fixed it. You might not have heard me fix it. All right. No, I did the same thing. I was like, oh, I wrote over it. All right. So what do you guys notice? Yeah, the x plus 1s cancel out, and so what does that mean? This graph has a hole at an x value of negative 1. And so I'm going to write down my leftovers. I have an x, an x minus 4, a 4, and an x plus 2. And then what do I do with those leftovers? Plug in negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 5 is 5. 4 times positive 1 is 4. So 5 fourths. So there's a hole at negative 1 to the left one, and then up 5 fourths, which is 1.25. So left one, up 1.25. So there's the hole right there. <laughs> what do you guys want to do next? <laughs> okay, so vertical asymptote would be so x equals negative 2. Does it matter if I put x equals? Yes, because we are writing the equation of a vertical line. Okay. So I can go ahead and graph that.
Your referral? Mm -hmm. Tried to get out of class, but it didn't stick. They made him come back. Such a bummer. All right. Um, so now I heard somebody say we should get our x-intercepts, so we can do that. What are the x-intercepts? Zero, zero, and four, zero, positive four, right? So we draw a point at zero, zero, and at positive four, zero, okay? And then... What do we do last? Find the domain. So we're going to use both factors on the bottom. I'm ignoring the 4 because it doesn't have an x, so it doesn't tell us very much. But I'm going to use the factor from the vertical asymptote. I'm also going to use the factor from the whole because both of those tell us what x values we technically can't have. So what are the x values we have to ignore? So we're going to say our domain is from negative infinity to negative 2, and from negative 2 to negative 1, and from negative 1 to infinity. Okay. Looks intense, doesn't it? All right, this is when we graph it on our calculators. Can you guys stop dropping stuff back there? Goodness gracious. Yeah. So remember, we type it in with parentheses. We put parentheses around the entire top part and the entire bottom. So I finish my parentheses to tell my calculator this all goes on top of the fraction. Then divide by, and then I put parentheses again. Make sure you put plus 8. It was plus 8. I wrote over it with marker. Yeah, but it was a, it was a plus sign. And one little trick that you can do to see if you have a correct slant asymptote is you can always check it in your calculator. So if you hit the y equals button and graph it for y2, 1 fourth x minus 3 halves. So if I just type in that slant asymptote or that oblique asymptote we had, then you should be able to see that it kind of follows the curve and that it doesn't like cut right into them. So that's a good way you can check that answer and make sure you got it right. Okay. So let's say that we thought our slant asymptote was 1 fourth x minus 6. If I put 1 fourth x minus 6 and it graphs the curve, then it would be really obvious our slant asymptote was wrong. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So graphing your slant asymptote is not required, but it's a really good way to check it and make sure you did it correctly. Okay. All right, so we have that. We're going to go ahead and find some more points. Is there a specific way you guys like to look up your numbers for your other points? You don't care? Second trace and then plug the numbers in? Okay, so I'm going to plug in like negative 3. Negative 4. Somebody needs to put their phone on silent. Awkward. Um, if you want to see what happens between the asymptote and the hole, if the hole's at negative 1, you could type in negative 1.5 and then have a point there to use.
I just do lots. I do enough until I feel like it's easy to graph it. So I don't have I don't have a specific number. I just I Well, yeah, I mean, if your graph looks nice with only four dots, I like to put more just to make sure my graph is really accurate. Um, I do have a lot of students looking at mine as an answer key, though. That would be the difference between us, right? So sometimes I do more than enough just to make sure that people who maybe have a hard time can still look at mine and, like, not feel as confused. Um, but if your graph, like, has the right shape as mine with less points, then I'd say you're probably fine. Yeah, yeah. It's all about being able to, like, graph it. And some students have, some students really understand the idea of following the asymptote. And for some students, it doesn't feel as common sense for some parts of it. So it kind of depends. You do as many points as you need to. Huh? No. Mm -mm. No. All right, so this is what our graph looks like. Now we have to start finding the other types of characteristics we learned about how to find with a graph. So specifically, we're going to focus on finding maximums and minimums and increasing and decreasing and range, okay? Now, um, I know on the video, I probably up here for the domain just wrote the numbers I excluded. And then I wrote the domain with like the um, interval notation at the bottom of the page. I did that on all my answer keys as well. If you don't want to write the domain again, you do not have to. Okay, so writing it once up here with the correct notation is totally fine. Um, so let's go ahead and find our max and min first if we have any, because that's the, um, the best thing to do first, I think. And what I've noticed is that students, when they do these problems, they have a really hard time determining if there's a max or a min. So the easiest way to check that is to hit the trace button so that your calculator is going to let the cursor go along the curve and then have your cursor trace the curve and watch the y values as you do it. So I can see my y value is at 0.58 and if I watch it, see how it's going down? Smaller, 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 it's getting negative. Now it's getting bigger again. So that means that there was definitely a minimum value there. Does that make sense? Because I watched the values get smaller and then I watched them get bigger again. So even if it doesn't look exactly like a valley, because these are like valleys that are not, um, they're not steep, they're very shallow, if that makes sense. So they go up very slowly, but they do go up, which means there is a minimum there. So typically what I do is I look at my page and I have it help me figure out what numbers I should look between. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'll look between, somewhere between negative one and eight. Okay, so I'm going to type in, I'm looking for a minimum. I think it will let me type in negative one, even though there's a hole there. Yes, so I said second trace option number three, because it's a minimum. When it asked me for a left bound, I didn't scroll over, I just typed negative one. When it asked me for a right bound, I didn't scroll, I just said eight. So I told my graph. I told my graph, find the lowest point between here and here, and my graph found it, okay? So I do have a minimum of the graph. It's at the point 1.464. So at 1.46 right here, I'm going to label on my graph that I have a minimum right there, and then off to the side, I'll go ahead and write down what the point actually is. The reason that I label it on my graph is because that's going to help me later when I determine my increasing and decreasing intervals. So it will be beneficial for you to mark that point. Um, I believe that I also said in the video you should do that because when I grade you guys in an um, assessment situation, I would give you a point for writing down that that's where it is. So the minimum, the x-coordinate is 1.464, the y-coordinate is negative 0.268, if you were in. Okay. Um, the other side, this one is always a little bit more difficult for students because it's even less obvious. So again, I'm just going to use that method of hitting the trace button and tracing the graph. I'm going to hold it left until I get to the other curve. And so if I start right here and I watch my y values, I just want to see if they go up and then come down again. So it's getting less negative, so it's going up. 
and then I can see that it got more negative as it went back down. Did you guys notice that? So that means there is definitely a maximum over here. It's just not a very high mountaintop. It would be like the top of a mound, basically. Something like kind of shallow. It goes up a little bit. It's like when you're riding a bike and it's kind of hard, but you're not riding on a hill. You know what I'm talking about? There's an incline there. It's just not very steep. So I'm going to do second trace, look for a maximum. And I'm going to check to see if there's a maximum between negative 8 and negative 2. Just somewhere between there. So I'm going to say left bound negative 8, right bound negative 2. Oh, just kidding. You can't use negative 8 and negative 2. I'm going to do left bound negative 8. And then for right bound, I'm going to do something to the right or to the left of negative 2. So my right bound. You could do negative three. The only issue would be sometimes the um, maximum could be really, really close. So I'm going to do negative 2.001. See how that's like basically the asymptote is just a little bit off of it. Does that make sense? It's a little bit off it. That way, if your uh, maximum is really close to the asymptote, you can still find it. Does that make sense? So for negative three, doing negative three this time would have been fine. But for some of the graphs, it would not have given you the answer. So just be careful with that. So here's our maximum at negative 5.46. So at negative 5.46, I'm going to write we have a max here. When I say max and min, am I talking about relative or absolute? These are relative. These are relative maxes and mins. Okay. So my max was at negative 5.464, negative 3.732. Yeah, how I found it. So I would do second trace, number four. I'm looking on this side of the graph, so I want to look between negative 8 and between negative 2. Uh, my calculator didn't like it when I tried to type negative 2, so I chose a number that was a little bit off of the asymptote, but still very close to it. So for my left bound, I did negative 8, and then for my right bound, I did negative 2.001. It's very close to the asymptote. It's just a little bit on the other side of it, and then my calculator was able to find it for me. Okay, what would you guys like to do next? We have increasing, decreasing, and range. Range? Okay. So for the range, we look at the very bottom of the graph, and I can see that the graph is going down forever. So what should I write? Negative infinity, right? And then I can see it's got negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4. And then it gets here, and it has this point right here. It has that maximum. And then there's some white space right in the middle where there's no graph. So I need to write the y-coordinate of that maximum. So I'm going to put negative 3.732, and I'm going to put a bracket around it because y. It's a point on the graph. It's really there. It's not an asymptote. The max is an actual point. Okay, so then I skip all this white space right here. And then the next y value that I'm going to have is that minimum right there. That's the next smallest y value I have, which is at negative <clears throat> 0.268. So another bracket because that's an actual point, 0.268. So I have all these little negative decimals, then I've got zero. Then up here, do you see how this side of the graph skips the 1.25? If we were to follow this curve as it goes up, would it skip 1.25 or would it hit it? It would hit it, right? Okay, so this y value, for sometimes you have to skip the y value of the whole, sometimes you don't. This would be a case where you don't have to skip the y value of the whole because even though 1.25 is missing over here, on this side, 1.25 would be hit right about there. So that means that y value is included. We keep going up. We see all these positive values for y. And so how do we finish the range? Infinity. So the types of things that are going to affect your range would be horizontal asymptotes, holes, 
and then maxes and mins could affect your range. Okay, so you're going to watch out for horizontal asymptotes, poles, maxes, and mins. Okay, it might even be good to write that on the page just to make sure you check it in the future. Okay, so next we have increasing and decreasing. So if we have our little stick figure, he's walking right here. What's he doing? Increasing, walking uphill. He hits the maximum, and then what does he do? Decrease. He slides down the graph, falls off into the abyss, and dies. It's weird. And then another stick figure drops down from heaven and starts right here. What is this stick figure doing? He is decreasing until he falls into the hole and dies. Then there is a new stick figure. This stick figure is doing what? Decreasing. And then hits the minimum, and then what does the stick figure do? Increase. So we have increasing, and we have decreasing. Okay, so increasing is first. What is the x value at this arrow? The x value. Negative infinity, right? So x value is left, so that's negative infinity, and it increases to the max. What was the x value of the max? Okay, and we're using a parenthesis because in pre-cal we always use a parenthesis. So increasing from here to the max, then it's decreasing, so I'll ignore that one for now. That was decreasing, that was decreasing, so I'll ignore that. Here at the minimum is where it starts increasing again. So what was the x value at the minimum? So I've got u 1.464. And then it increases all the way to the right arrow. And what x value is the right arrow? Infinity. OK. So there's your increasing interval. Your decreasing interval starts here at the max. What was the x value at the max? And it decreases until it falls off into the abyss at the vertical asymptote. What was the x value of the vertical asymptote? Negative 2. Okay. Then you pick up a new stick figure up here at the vertical asymptote. What was the x value at the vertical asymptote? Negative 2. And that stick figure is decreasing until the hole. What was the x value of the hole? Negative 1. So negative 2 to negative 1. And then the stick figure decreases from the hole to the minimum. So we do the x value of the hole, which was that negative 1, to the x value of the minimum. 1.464, and then that's it. Okay. Could we do the end behavior real quick? Oops. Pretty standard, so we'll say, as x goes left forever, what does the y value do? So we look at the very left side, what's the y value doing? It's decreasing, it's going down. The y value is going down, and so what number do we use for that? Negative infinity. So as we look to the left of the graph, the left side of the graph is going down. As we look to the right side of the graph, the y value is going up. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, how do your brains feel? It's a lot of stuff, right? So analyzing, um, we analyze graphs. The unfortunate part is that when you guys learn math in high school, you don't get to the point where you can apply it because that's all in college. 
So calculus is really the first level where you can see the purpose of all of these things. What we're doing for you guys is we are helping you understand the vocabulary that people use to describe these functions so that later when you use them, if someone says, oh, that's outside of the domain, you know what that means. Like, oh, we can't do that because that's outside of the domain. So for you guys, you get a lot of like the math stuff. You learn the skill of math. You don't learn the application of math until you're higher up, which is unfortunate because you just get bored all the time. For you guys, if you're not going to be a mathematician, the best part about learning math is it helps you to think logically and be precise and think through like critical thinking skills and keep track of information, be organized. Those are some skills that are that you typically learn more so in math classes as opposed to like English or history or whatever. So it's still good for your brain to like learn how to think this way. It just, yeah, it doesn't apply as much if you're not going to be like a mathematician as far as the actual work itself. Yeah. All right, let's do one more. Um, the next one we're going to do is number five. So if it's going to bother you that you're doing these out of order, the next one we're doing is number five on your worksheet. So if you want to write number two, number three, number four, leave space. Um, then number five would be the front side of a different sheet of paper. If you don't care if you do them out of order, then that's totally fine with me. So the next one we're doing is what will be number five on the worksheet I have not given you yet. There are six total. We just did number one. We're doing number five next. Okay. All right, now I went really slow with that one so I could really explain stuff. Do you want me to go slow again or do you want us to like go through this one a little bit more quickly? Quicker? Okay. So the problem is negative x to the third minus 4x squared on the top. x to the third plus 3x squared minus 4x on the bottom. So first we have our y-intercept, which is none. Then we have the horizontal asymptote, which is negative 1, y equals negative 1. So I already know what the end behavior is. How do I know? It's the horizontal asymptote. So if I do the end behavior as x goes left forever, it's going to be negative 1. As x goes right forever, it's going to be negative 1. I won't write it yet. I just already know the answer. All right. Um, it's because of that that um, people call, they call horizontal asymptotes and oblique asymptotes, they call them end behavior asymptotes. Because horizontal asymptotes tell you that the end behavior goes to that number, and oblique asymptotes tell you that it's going to go to positive or negative infinity. All right, so next we have to factor. How do we factor this one? Take out a negative x squared, and that leaves you with x plus 4, okay? On the bottom, we'll take out an x, and that leaves us with so we have negative x squared and x plus 4. Um, and then on the bottom, we have x and x plus 4 and x minus 1. Okay, so what's interesting about this problem? There's two holes. So we have an x that cancels out with one of the x's but leaves one behind. So that means we have a hole with an x value of 0. We also have a hole with an x value of negative 4. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and write my leftovers. I have a negative x left over on top. That's it. And then on the bottom, I have a leftover x minus 1. 
So to find the y coordinate for the first hole, I'm going to do negative 0 over 0 minus 1. Negative 0 divided by negative 1. Anyone? 0. Mm -hmm. Don't kill any Arctic foxes. Okay, so 0, 0. And then we have negative of negative 4 divided by negative 4 minus 1. Yeah. Negative four fifths, perfect. Oops, sorry. All right, so we have a hole at zero, zero, and then at negative four, negative four fifths. And there is a vertical asymptote. What is it? X equals positive one. Mm -hmm. Yep, because it says X minus one. It just took me like eight tries to pick up my ruler. It's a rough one. Is there an x-intercept? No. So this would be good to write on your page. There is a leftover factor, but it's just an x. So that would make us think that we had an x-intercept of 0. But we can't because there's already a hole at 0. Okay? So on my paper, I'm going to write this out. Already a hole at 0. So I'm going to put none for the x-intercept. The other confirmation that I have that that should be none is that if I had an x-intercept at 0, that would be the point 0, 0, and then I should have seen it as a y-intercept as well, and I did not. And so that's some confirmation that that really should have been none. Okay. And then last we have domain. So I'm looking at all of the factors that I skipped. So x cannot equal 0 and 1. So that's negative infinity to negative 4. We have to do the smallest one first. Then negative 4 to 0. Then 0 to... Then 1 to... All right, and then go ahead and type it in on your calculator.
All right, are we, how are we doing with graphing? Good? So, like this? I can see if you have a typo, maybe, or if you did your parentheses, if you missed an end parentheses, or you missed starting a new parentheses. So I'm going to check to see if there's a max or a min. Anyone have any predictions if there's a max or a min? None. So if we look, I'm just going to hit the trace button, and I'm going to follow my graph. So right here, I think if there would be anything, it would be a max. So I'm just going to check to see if my Y values go up and then come back down again. So if you watch the Y values, they're getting more and more negative. They're getting more negative. They're getting more negative, getting more negative. So what does that mean? There was no max. It didn't go up and come back down again. It just went down. Okay. So if I follow this, I think there, if there's anything, it would be a min. So I'm going to watch my Y values to see if they go down and then come back up again. So if I'm watching my Y values, they're getting smaller. Now they're getting more negative, more negative, more negative. So was there a min? No, because it never went down and came back up again. So off to the side, I'm going to say no max and no min. In an assessment situation, if you don't write this, I just think you didn't look. Does that make sense? If you don't write this, I think you didn't look, you don't get the points. So you need to say that there are none if there aren't any. So then I know you looked for it. All right, so now let's go ahead and write down for, um, or we, you want to do the range? So should we do that next? Okay. So we look from the bottom of the graph to the top. What do you guys think? Start with negative infinity. We got negatives, 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 negatives. And then we have to skip negative one. There's a horizontal asymptote at negative one, so we got to skip negative one. Okay. Do I use a bracket or a parenthesis? Parenthesis. Okay. So negative one is skipped. I can see some negative y values right in here. They're very close to negative one, but they're not quite there. And then this y value right here is going to get skipped. What was the y value right here? It's a whole negative four fifths, okay? So we're gonna say there's some negative y values right here. So we've got negative one to negative four fifths. That's a whole, so it gets skipped. We have some more negative y values right here, and then we get to this hole and we have to skip that y value. So this is going to be from negative four fifths to zero. And then after that, we have all the y values going up forever. Zero to infinity. So here you'll notice we had no brackets. On the last problem, we had brackets because we had maxes and mins that were making us skip values. This time we have only asymptotes and holes having a skip values and that's why we have only parentheses, no brackets. Because they're all y values you couldn't equal. All right, now I need to label for increasing and decreasing. So if I put my little stick figure right here, what's he doing? Increasing, he drops off into a hole. We have a new stick figure, what's this guy doing? Increasing. He shoots up into the air, hits a bird, and dies. The bird lives, but he dies. He got um, impaled in the temple with the bird's beak. Sad story. A new stick figure happens right here, and what is this stick figure doing? Increasing. Okay, so for increasing, I'm going to write left arrow is what x value? Negative infinity. Um, oh, he's increasing. He falls off into this hole and dies first. I missed that, that there were two of them. So what's the x value right there? Negative 4. Then a new stick figure pops out and increases till that hole and dies. So that's negative 4 to 0. Then it was 0 up to the um, 
asymptote, it shoots into the air, so we're going to say 0. And what is the x value of the asymptote? 1. So we're going to say from 0 to 1, because we're using the x value, not the y value. And then we have increasing from this x value, which is 1, all the way over to a right arrow. So x value of 1 to an x value of infinity. Okay. And then for decreasing, what am I going to write? I'm going to write none. <laughs> Okay, and before we move on to our own problems, let's go ahead and do end behavior. So as x goes to the left forever, what does the y value go to? Negative 1, and that's because we have a horizontal asymptote. So it just follows the horizontal asymptote forever. So y goes to negative 1. As x goes to the right forever, y goes to negative 1. So... Negative one, negative one. So those horizontal asymptotes is what it goes to. All right. 